Here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees. And uh, I'm so excited tonight for another live stream that we're going to be doing. And tonight we're going to be doing a conversation with Julie and Laura from Laura Farms, one of the members of the Fruitful Five. And uh, here he is. And uh, his website is, is below. It's laurafarmsmiami.com. And he has so much fruit in season that he ships through the mail. He has amazing fruit trees. And what I love so much about his website is he has the varieties of each particular fruit. He just doesn't have the tr one tree. He has so many different varieties. And that just blows my mind. Even black sapote. He has like different varieties of black sapote, which is unheard of. Uh, it's just amazing. So everybody, this is Julian Laura, and he's going to answer your questions tonight. But before we get started, Julian, say hello. And if there's anything you want to share before we get started, go ahead and then I'll read you the questions. Hi, Paul. How are you, man? Uh, good to be here. Good to see you. As you see, I grew my beard out so that you wouldn't be the only guy with a beard. So, you know, so you could feel more comfortable, more brotherly. Because I know you're not going to shave your beard, so I left mine. But I did find a picture of you without a beard. You know that? Yes. There, there are some out there. Let's see if, if the audience can see this. Yes. <laughs> Look at this kid. Look at this guy. That's a good-looking guy, man. I don't this know who that is. Well vegan. I don't know who that is. Look at that kid. So happy. That was like before really puberty. Happy. That was before puberty. That was before the raw life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know what it is, though, everybody. You know, the reason I don't shave is I'm so busy making videos. I don't have time to shave. There you go. Yeah. And yes. I don't know. I like to change my look every once in a while. You know, sometimes I have a full beard. Sometimes the goatee, just the goatee or just the mustaches or the or the sideburns. I like to change it up. Kind of like John Lennon. John Lennon, he, took, he looked like four or five different people in his lifetime. He went from... From, from Caucasian to Asian at, at one point. There you go. There you go. Well, uh, raise your camera just a little. Just a little. Raise your phone a little. Everybody, we're going to take questions tonight. And uh, I'm so excited. I got so many videos with Julian online. I'm going to head back down there soon. I know some of you are asking that. And we're going to be looking at some fruits that are in season now. Uh, but I want to answer your questions. Some of you already submitted them that couldn't be live tonight. And the live questions, just post them to the side chat. I'm going to take them. Hopefully, we'll get through most of the questions, but we never have time for all of them. So continue to post questions under the, under in the comments even after this and share this with others. And we'll get to those questions. We'll do this again soon if you want that. We are in a busy time right now. It's mango season. So I got the first question. Uh what do you have available now? Because I know you sell, uh, besides all the fruit trees you sell, I know you sell fruit. What's ripe right now that people can go to your website and order? Um, star apple, specifically the, the bolito variety, which is the white flesh one. Sometimes it comes pink inside. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's white, sometimes it's pink, you know. But when you get the pink one, it's like winning the Caimito lottery. Sure. And what's what's the variety called? Hippolito is named Hippolito. after the, the former president of the Dominican Republic. Really cool guy. He uh, was, you know, he's like a real big mango fanatic. And he wants, he needs to have every single uh, mango cultivar. So back in the early 2000s, early 2000s, I would bring him all these, uh, the budwoods of all these varieties that he's requesting. And uh, we became really good friends. And uh uh, I, I I saw this uh, caimito tree in his in his farm. It was probably like forty feet tall. Made this huge fruit. I asked one of his workers to pick me one, and they climbed all the way up to the top of the tree, brought down a fruit, let me have it, and I just had to bring back Budwood. Yes, I'm actually seeing a, a bunch of nurseries now. This tree, uh, and the palito, is really becoming a popular variety. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, really but it deserves it because it's a big fruit. It's consistent. It's reliable. It makes a lot of fruit. It makes big fruit. It's delicious fruit. Um, you know, and has like a whole bunch of stages. It comes like in an early stage when it's just 
ripened recently and then other stages where it stays long around the tree and it starts changing color on the skin and it starts getting like a pink fl- pink blush or like a bluish type of skin. It goes from green to light green to bluish to like pinkish. It's really interesting. I've never seen anyone like uh, any other variety like that. All right, everybody. You can order that and taste it yourself. Go right to Laura Farms. Uh, Miami.com. I'll post it below. We're going to get into all these questions. We have a lot of questions that everybody post your questions. Uh, the first one is uh, by uh, a username, uh, Creator Good. And he says, is Ronnie Avocado an A or B type? Um, I'm guessing a B type. Okay. And he's had a lot of questions about the Ronnie. He's saying, and, and by the way, Ronnie is an amazing avocado that uh, Julian sells uh, exclusively. And yeah, it, well, it, uh, I, it took delicious. me 20 years to get the tree. It took me 20 years to get the tree. The 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 owner, Ronnie's father, was was my one of my, my one of my dad's best friends. Okay, didn't let me have it. Goes, no, sorry. And my dad asked him. He goes, No, you're my friend, but I can't let. You have, I'm making too much money. I don't want nobody with this tree. I want to be the only one. Because making, selling it in the time of the year where when avocado was scarce. But now the Dominican Republic started importing avocado by the tons that time of the year as well. So the price went down. He was like, hey, you still want that avocado? It's not worth anything anymore. Come get some budwood. The rest is history. So it's been a while since that. And, um, you know, he told me to name it after his son. You know, I'm keeping that. I'm keeping faithful to that. Okay, uh, so th- this person has several questions about the Ronnie Avocado, and we're going to speak about a lot more things tonight, but what is the percentage of uh, the flesh of the Ronnie Avocado contain? No, what is yeah, what percent of oil does the flesh of the Ronnie Avocado contain? I don't know, but it's a, a lot. A lot of oil. It's very dense. <clears throat> you know, dense, pasty, um dry but not too dry you know it it has the proper amount of oil you know i have i have personally conflicted feelings between what is my you know between simmons and ronnie because historically simmons has always been my favorite avocado starting with my father my father that's been his favorite avocado his whole life till till the day he died and me and my brother have agreed with him that Simmons the best avocado, taste wise and production. But Ronnie has really tested my limits. I think I don't know which one is better. Okay. Somebody's asked the same person's asking what's the season of the Ronnie? Um the you season. Can start you can start picking fruit as early as January. And if you leave, if you let it stay on the tree. It will hold on. At least the majority of them will hold on into into um, March and April. Now, there's a lot of factors involved. There could be wind, knock down the fruit too early. Could be critters, knocking it down, taking a bite off off of it, or it could be even us picking the fruit before time because we're impatient. But if you have the patience, you can leave it on the tree. It'll stay on the tree. I mean, Ronnie's father. And his at his farm, um, they have giant trees, huge trees, and I would go there around March, late March, and pick fruit. I went to Trek, and they have a tree over there at Trek, and I picked and I put it on my Facebook. A ripe, a a, a ripe and ready to pick, not ripe, but ready to pick Ronnie, at Trek, um, in May. So it wow. held on a long time, and uh, I think it's on my Facebook. Maybe like two years about uh, two years ago. So wow! And uh, so the person's asking again: uh, Is it a, a how big is the tree? Does it get really big, or is it just yeah? Like... It, in twenty years, it can be really big, yeah. But it can be managed like anything else. Okay, uh, day avocado. Uh, somebody's asking. Uh, can it be maintained and still be productive? How short can it be and still be productive with the avocado? Well, the one the one they have at truck is probably um, 
probably 12 feet tall and it's 20 years old. But you know how they cut back over there. I, I don't remember if, I, if they cut. I think that one's too young to, to have uh, met the blades, the circular saws. But um, I don't think it gets that big. I mean, like, again, in, in 15, 20 years, it's going to grow into a big tree. But they're, e they're easily managed. Just get a chainsaw, cut them in half, and then let them start all over again. Or do what I do is I cut the main center heaviest branch. I just cut it off and leave everything else so the plant can continue to function. Okay, and make fruit for you until you receive, you know, get a lot of uh, growth. And in two years from there, that will be to make fruit. And then the other ones, you can choose another one from the, that are that's the, the thickest ones, cut. And then, you know, every two, every two years, just, you know, cut the thickest branch on the tree. That way they still make fruit for you. But not all at the same time. Unless okay. you really, you know, have an issue with the tree and you want it to stay back. All right. Somebody, uh, while we're talking about avocados, somebody's asking about Maria Black. Is it a type A or type B? And what uh, month does the fruit mature in South Florida? Um, Maria Black, uh, I'm guessing it's a B. And what month? I don't remember what month Maria Black is in. I think Maria Black is more of a mid-season avocado because I know Leaf has one in his yard. Like the fall? Uh, even before. It's early to mid. So I know it runs out when we start getting the later varieties in. That's so cool. definitely not not a fall. I would even say a a little later than Simmons, but it's still summertime. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it's also a dwarf tree. It's a it's a smaller avocado tree. Yeah. Uh, and so now, what's your favorite low quat variety for South Florida? Um, you know, um. I'm uh, really excited about this loquat variety that I discovered called Honeyquat. And uh, I have video that I'm going to post on my Facebook. I'm trying to upload on Facebook all the time, but it's so slow to upload. It takes forever. And and, and my, my phone goes dark. It stops uploading. I have to be on top of it all the time. It's such a pain in the butt. I'm going to start doing it on YouTube. But I was eating this Honeyquat and... Um, which I named honeypot because when you when you you know bite the end of it and you squeeze the seeds out, out comes this honey, this like slow dripping honey, like if like you know like if it was ketchup coming out of the bottle, like really slow, kind of looks like that slime from Ghostbusters, like a transparent slime. I was thinking about calling it slime quad because it looks so slimy, but when you taste it, it's very pleasant, it's very nice, and I've never seen a low pot like that or or do that. It's really amazing. You come, well, I think you picked the right name. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like honey. It, it really tastes like honey and low pot mixed together. And the leaf of the tree looks different than your average low pot. It's more um, ornamental looking. It's more uh, uh, prettier, more feminine. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not your typical low pot uh, tree. It's um, it's totally different. It's kind of like the Ross Apodi of low pots. You know how Ross Apodi is not categorized as a canistel almost because it's so different looking or even a green sapote is kind of like different from a mame. This is kind of like that, but I'm sure it's still a low pot. So, um, you know, it looks like a, um, like a, a root shoot from a grafted tree. Okay. Because this is, okay. There's a sherry low pot there and next to it is like this. I thought it was, I thought it was um, someone that, Threw some seeds on the ground and they sprouted and made the tree. But it, it happens to be a root sprout from the root stock of the sherry low plot there. So whatever okay. root stock they were using back in those days, because that well, that low plot tree must be like 40, 50 years old. So whatever root stock they were using back then, some crazy stuff. Some the slimiest low plot I've ever seen on my low plots are not slimy. They're like a, a, a regular juice. And all of them, I, I tried it again this year. Last year and this year, and it's still the same, has the same characteristic. And it's really nice. Even wow. when they're not fully ripened, even when they're not fully ripened, they're still sweet. Most loquats, they're not fully ripened. If they're orange, if they're not orange and they're yellow, they're sour. But this one, not even fully ripened and still sweet. Uh, so well, I thought that was pretty important. Yeah. 
we have more questions about that exact. Uh, Dio is saying he purchased a honey crop from you about a month ago. Should he sh uh, go ahead and upgrade it to a three a gallon container? And how long until it will bear fruit? They fruit really fast. You know, in a year or so, they'll probably fruit. Um, if you if if you want, you can wait for it to grow another four or five inches in the existing one gallon pot. And once that happens, you can step it up to a, a two or three gallon pot and uh, use pearl mix soil that has pearl light mixed in with it. And, uh, you know, water it as needed. That means if it's wet, don't overwater it. Don't water it again. Just test the soil moisture with your finger until it's significantly drier. And uh, then that's it. And then you and then you water it. If you can water it with some all-purpose Miracle Grow, even better. All right. Well, we got some great questions. Uh, the thing is, uh, tonight we're only going to be going on in about an hour. Uh, so instead of getting too much into it, we're going to have to go pretty fast with the questions and the answers if we want to get the majority of them. Uh, and then we could focus on each one of these in later videos because I will be down there soon so we could focus on all of these somebody's asking uh and that's just a suggestion if you want to go deep into an answer that's fine but it's going to take time from the other questions so somebody says i'd like to know the root stock for avocado seedlings is it super important as long or uh, as long as they are healthy is all good as long as they're healthy it's all good you can use any avocado for root stock historically everybody has used walden as the root stock and, um, you know, which is a really good choice because when they germinate and they and they start growing in, into a little tiny tree, that little tree that comes out of the seed is almost as thick as a pencil or as thick as a pencil. So you can practically graft as soon as it comes out of the seed. If it's like this big, it's fat enough to be able to graft. And that is a very good trait. You can, you know, you know start working right away. Um, Walden is like that. Now, um, other varieties tend to have skinnier uh, uh, stems that grow out of the seed and are harder to graft because they're too skinny, unlike Walden. But if you wait and let it grow and like, thicken up, then it's very, very good for, for grafting as long as it's healthy. But as far as, you know, I've learned that any avocado is a good rootstock as long as it's healthy and it has the caliber, the correct caliber for grafting. Okay. Uh, Jesse Smith is asking, what's the best avocado that's dry and tasty? Ronnie. No, okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, what is the growth habit of P22? Mango. I don't know. It's too new for me. I, I, have, I have a tree in the ground. It's probably... Three or four feet tall, but I, I can't tell you. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Vito says, uh, do you do tours? Um, You know what? If uh, somebody wants to walk around the farm and, and you know, see what's on the floor, see, you know, what's ripe on the tree, I'm, I'm always happy to um, walk around with my customers. Now, if you, um, if it's a busy day and I can't leave the office, I have to stick around here and uh, wait for people to show up. And uh, usually my my employees bring me my trees I, by request. But yeah, I, I love walking around the farm. I mean, today I walked around uh, with this couple. It's a really nice couple that came and bought a whole bunch of trees. I uh, We walked around the whole farm and we found a Mamea Americana on the floor. Wow. Yeah. It was like, I'm like, wow, this is your lucky day. So here it is. Here's what's left of it. I'm going to bring it inside. So that, that fruit I did many videos on, and I'm actually going to put one in the ground, that same one. So how long will it, how long does it take to fruit after you get it? Uh, like if somebody buys it from you, how long does it take to fruit? Uh, it, could, it could take about four years, five years to fruit, maybe sooner if you're lucky. Even if it's grafted, it takes a while for these stuff to make fruit. Now, does the treat, is it very productive, the tree, or no? Yeah, this this uh, tesoro that I had that I that I uh, promote because it's it's uh, free stone. It produces a lot of fruit. My tree has a ton of fruit on it. 
And the Redland is very productive. That one's from the Fruit and Spice Park. And uh, what's the other one that I have? Um, Bear Child. Besides the free stone on the Tesoro that you have, do they all taste the same? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Okay. And 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 also, this is important for people to know. The best time to pick this fruit is when it falls. That's correct, right? Well, that's what I like to do. You can scratch it like a mummy to see if it's orange, or you can see how the skin is stretching, how how it's expanding into into um, how the dark matter is expanding space, and how it's, everything stretches out on the skin. Like the dots on the skin start separating. That's a good indicator. Okay, I just thought of a great idea. We can have the Fruitful Five come to your farm and look at your farm as you introduce us, but with a studio audience. And like maybe 20 lucky viewers can follow us around. There you go. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Oh, maybe yeah. one day it will be big, so big we need a studio audience. Yeah. All right, so when will you have graphs available for Fernandez and San Pablo? Um, we're working on it now. God knows. That is like uh, a priority is to um, have plenty of uh, Fernandez and San Pablo one-gallon trees. Um, yeah, we're grafting them now. Well, they've been grafted. We're just waiting for them to show, show us some signs of life. Hope I get a lot of them to take, you know, they're not the easiest thing in the world to graft. But the ones that have failed, I can I have I still have time to regraft it. So um yeah, this year I, I don't think I'm gonna be selling much fruit this year because last year I sold a lot of fruit online and um you know I depended on people for seeds and they never came through. So I think if I'm lucky I have like maybe a hundred or so grafted. So this year I'm gonna plant all the all the seeds that I have left over and uh have as many rootstocks ready to to graft for twenty twenty five. I'm gonna be yeah. your uh, your seed bank this year and I'll give you back all the seeds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. But look, look at this. See that? What is that? What is that? This. Wow, wow. <laughs> What's this? Wow. What's that? What you got to do is charge like $60 of fruit. And then when people return it, they get like a majority of the money back. Yeah. Pay $60 for this and get $20 back if you give me the seeds. Yeah. And you have to ship it. Yeah. No, just kidding. No, no. Can't do that. <laughs> yeah, these, are just, these are all San Pablo's. I'm, I'm got, coming down there like soon. Parking. I'll be down there soon. That's that That is just so everyone knows that's watching. And of every fruit, that's that's the sweetest, tastiest fruit I think, uh, besides the durian that I've ever had. It's absolutely oh, amazing. It's like strawberry yogurt. Yeah, yeah. All right, no, let's like raspberry yogurt. It's it's amazing. So along with the question, somebody says, "Can you ship to the USA one?" But I don't understand the question. But yes, he does ship some things. He can't ship to California, but yeah, other... California is the only is the only um, problem state when it comes to shipping fruit. I can. Ship my May fruit to California, though. Oh, you're USV one, USV one. I don't know what that means. USV. Yes. See, I don't know. All right, so uh, everybody, get those likes up there <laughs> of all the people watching. Get the likes up so we could uh get more people to view this. Uh, when will Fernandez trees be ready? Uh, <clears throat> interesting. We had those same questions. Well, uh, it's just a matter of weeks, you know. Three, uh, three to six weeks, I'm guessing, and they're going to be teeny tiny plants. These things are, they fly off the shelf. You know, a teeny tiny plant like this, grafted uh, for $85 or something, just flies off the shelf, disappears in a, in a matter of, of, of seconds when they're, when they're posted online. You know, some people, oh, you should put it on eBay and auction them and get $1,000 per tree. I'm like, no, that ain't me. All right. Uh, Big G says, I'm growing Manila mango. I purchased at Lowe's. I live in Palm Springs, California. Is Manila mango the same as sold in a grocery store called champagne mango? No, champagne mango is the ataulfo. 
Mexican mango. And uh, Manila mango is popular in Mexico, just like the Philippine mango is popular in Mexico. But um, yeah, those are from the Philippines. And Ataulfo is from Mexico. Now, um, they could have been seedlings of Indo-Chinese mangoes planted in Mexico, which is probably what the story is. All right. Somebody, it's not a question. They made a comment. Simmons is a seedling of a Pollock or a Pollock. Is that true? I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, how big does orange essence mango tree get? What is the minimum hours of direct sunlight do fruit trees need to set fruit in South Florida? Um, Minimum sunlight is whatever nature gives us. The sun comes up at seven in the morning and goes down at seven at night. That's that's what it requires. And everything's worked out historically since then. As long as it, it's not shaded, you'll, you know, you the more sun you get, the better fruit you'll have. But even if it's shade, you'll get some fruit. Yeah, uh, the more sun, the more flowers, the more flowers, the more fruit. If all direct, if the tree is getting sunlight at, in every side of the tree and every, every angle, it's going to make flowers in every angle. That side that's shaded won't make flowers, or if any, very little. Yeah, and it's not. It's not a. From what I understand, it's not a super vigorous tree like some others. Uh, the the orange essence. essence. Yeah, it's not. It's not a dwarf by any means, but it's not super like. It's kind of like Pride. a Gary. Kind of like a Gary mango. Gary mango is like a short and like a carry, like a short and wide tree. But you know, at the end of the day, in twenty years, it's going to be a big tree. Yes, everything will be. Yeah, can you ship trees to California? Yes. Okay. What is the smallest pot size seed, my maize, and uh, Kamito's fruit? You know, I've seen Kamito's fruit in a three gallon and seven gallon pot. The my my purple house variety and the polito in a in a seven gallon or a three gallon, but they they flower right away. They flower right away. All right. So this is a question you've answered many times on, on my show and in our events. What's your top five favorite mangoes? I even um, know that because you've answered them so much. Gary's okay, Gary. Yep. Gary, number one. Number two. Ty Moore. Alabama Shan is three, right? <laughs> Alamfor, Ben Shan, number two. Oh, that's two. I thought Ty Moore was two. Ty Moore's number three. Hold on, man. Lemon Meringue, number four. And then number five, you know, so many mangoes that I enjoy. It's hard to, it's hard, you know, it's like a Miss Universe contest. I've said it before. It's like a Miss Universe contest. It's hard to pick the winner. Um, I guess number five would be, uh, I'm not going to take too much time. Mm -hmm. My goodness, number five, Jakarta. I love Jakarta. Okay. Somebody's asking, what about a poultry loquat? A what loquat? Poach, uh, poach, uh, what about P? Where is Oh, P E L U C H E? Poultry loquat? Never heard of it. Peluche, Peluche. Peluche, Peluche, yes. Oh, Peluche Loqua. I I posted a video on my Facebook. Uh call it Respect the Peluche because it's so big. It's like this big. It's massive. It's not the best taste of loqua. It's it's nice. You know, I it started to crack. It could have ripened a little bit more, but it started to crack, so I picked it. It was still kind of yellow. But it was huge. Couldn't believe how big it was. I have a couple of trees, and pretty soon, uh, I think I may have sold some online already. It might be on the website already. Okay. Questions are pouring in. Uh, Ronnie versus Campong Avocado. Ronnie versus Campong. I'll take a Ronnie. And, and let me tell you, Campong is another one that'll stay on the tree until April. It's an amazing avocado. It tastes excellent. But I don't know. I'm like a Ronnie man. I love I love Ronnie avocado. It's kind of okay. like my Gary. 
Okay. And uh, is, imp is improved Pollock a variant of Pollock? Yeah. It's a seedling of a, of a Pollock avocado that my dad planted back in the uh, 90s. My dad loved Pollock. Aside from Simmons, my dad said, look, Pollock is, is, could be better because it's bigger than Simmons. It tastes just as good as Simmons, but it doesn't produce any fruit. It only produce like one or two fruit a year. And that's it. So we can't, you know, shill Pollock too much because it's not productive. So my dad, in hopes to come up with something improved, he planted a seed of a Pollock avocado fruit. And quickly, six or seven years later, it started making fruit and it was very good tasting. And as the years went by, it was becoming more and more productive, more and more productive as it grew into a bigger tree. And uh, and uh, we decided to name it Improved Pollock because it really, we won the avocado lottery with this one. It actually uh, uh, improved in the in the area that we were interested in, which is the productive aspect of the of the fruit. So we got the quality and the size of a pollock. It might be slightly smaller than a pollock. Pollocks are enormous. This one's a, it's a big avocado. I don't know if you if you remember uh, the size of the fruit. It's, it's a very big avocado, but it is productive. That is the key here. You got the quality of the pollock, and uh, you know, improved pollock could be. I can easily say that's one of my favorite avocados right there. That Ronnie and Simmons. You got the summer. You got Simmons in the summer. You got the improved pollock for the fall. And then you got the Ronnie for the winter, and then the Atme, the Atme for April and May. That's the name of the avocado. April and May. That's Atme. the new one. That's the new that's one. The new one. That's the new animal in the zoo. Yeah. That's the new. That's the new star at the zoo at the at the tropical fruit zoo here at Lara Farms. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I have pictures out. of that avocado on my Facebook as well. If you go back to it's ripe right, right now at Trek. You know, I went to go see the tree at Trek to get some fruit, and it had no fruit, but it had a whole bunch of baby ones. There's a ton of fruit sets. So I'm like telling myself, is this gonna this avocado gonna be on this tree all the way until April and May next year? Yet to be seen. So we shall see. But this fruit, zero. This year it's zero fruit. Wow. All right. Somebody's asking, how's your lemon meringue clock, uh, crop looking this year? Uh, they're planning on ordering it. But how is yours looking this year? Um, you know, mangoes this year here in, in the Redlands, really bad. And it's not like over there in West Palm Beach where it's beautiful. You guys have mangoes probably like this big now, right? Yep. Yeah. I have stuff that is this big now. We're super, super behind. The climate over there and the climate here for some reason is, you know, different enough for our fruit to be behind that uh, that far. So my fruit's this big now. And, you know, I, and, thra yeah. and thracnose and powdery mildew has just run rampant. And it's not just me, it's just everywhere. Now, if you live close to US-1, close to whatever, um, Palmetto, and you're good. It's kind of like a West Palm Beach type of climate. But where I'm at, it's been it's a really bad year. Let's see how the mango season looks. Well, this year, uh, from what I understand, everyone except West Palm Beach is having a really bad mango year this year. Last year we had one of the best years ever. Uh this year for both for both areas for for down for here and up there. But it's looking good up here, but everyone yeah. else is saying they're not having the best year. We went when when we went to Chris's the other uh, the other week, I was flabbergasted by the by the the fruit set over there and and and, and no disease and and how how much you know how many fruit I mean the, how many fruits uh, 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 took on the tree. Yeah, let me tell you, man. I really envy. It's really it's. Let me tell you, that area is is a, a place to envy. Yeah, you're well, mangled up. Uh, I don't know how much time you have, but we got a lot of questions, so we got to go fast if you want. All right, let's do it. 
All right. And, uh, and and thank you for taking time to come on, everybody. Uh, uh, LauraFarmsMiami.com is his website. And there's a bunch of videos on my site with him as well. And we'll be down there soon to do more videos. So uh, best flavor, Mame. Pace. Pace in Jamaica. And Lorito. Okay. I know Alex likes the better especial, but, you know, it's really good. It's probably made, I don't know if it's better than Lorito, but it's up there. But Pace has this really good flavor that I like. And Jamaica has a, a very unique flavor, too. So it's hard. But Pace, historically, has always been my favorite. Okay. And I'm really picky with my main. Okay. What's the history of Thompson Red Avocado? I don't know the history of Thompson Red. Okay. Most buttery mango. Buttery mango or avocado? They say mango. <laughs> I don't know. We should do like an origin. I want to do like an origin story series of like, you know, Thompson Red, the origin of Thompson Red, the avocado, the origin of Simmons avocado. Sure. And maybe do it with Alex. Alex would be like perfect for this stuff. Yeah. Uh, does rootstock matter for mangoes? Uh, and no. what kind do you use? What kind do you like to use? I like to use mono embryonic mangoes, which is, you know, like a Tommy Atkins or a Hayden or, or anything with one embryo. The poly embryonics too, I like um, because you can spread them. You can you have like, you know, five trees in one seed. So when they germinate, you can break them apart and plant five trees from one seed. So it's good. All right. Uh, oh, they said no, but most buttery avocado, not mango. They said avocado. Butteriest avocado, like Simmons. What'd you say? Simmons, 100% Simmons. Simmons. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can a low quat realistically be kept 10 by 10? With a chainsaw. <laughs> Space wise, though, if you have. Several you can you can grow them ten by ten with a chainsaw. Okay. What new fruit are you excited to taste this year? Um, well, I'm always excited to taste the Gary mango every year. And as far as new ones, um, you know, I haven't tried the Karen Michelle yet, and I'm I'm really excited about trying that one. It's nice. And, it's really nice. and the apricot. Yeah, the both of them are nice. Yeah. We'll be having those for our samples at our Father's Day event in uh, a, a free mango tasting Father's Day event, the third annual one. And Julie will be there up in uh, the, the second annual or, for, or, or third or annual, second. third annual. Really? Yep. yep. The first one we did. And then the second one was last year. The, sec the first one was pretty small. Last year was just insane. So many people. And this is going to be the third one. So, uh, can you use pond apple to graph onto? You can, people, pond apple is, is a widely used rootstock for um, a lot of things. For Adamoya, for sugar apple. Um, they're widely used for that, yeah. Uh, Ronnie asked, uh, what's your thoughts on Little Gem? Does it perform well for you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had top work the Lancetia tree with Little Gem, and uh, I made a lot of fruit. I made a lot of fruit you know, on a young, young graph, and it's kind of a late season mango. It's it's an amazing producer here in West Palm Beach, and uh, I have one. My neighbors have one, and it, it's it hangs on late. It's a nice avocado. You know. The one mango, and I really like this. May be like my number six or seven favorite, Maha Chinook. Okay, the worst place for mango is here in the Redlands, and this variety doesn't have a problem. It it doesn't have a problem with powdery mildew, and it doesn't have a problem with anthracnose. Everybody else is having problems, and Maha Chinook is making fruit, holding fruit. Like, like if nothing, and uh, with very little attention. So I think for climates like here in the Redlands, it's the perfect mango because it's very little 
um, maintenance. Well, spraying with fungicide and all that stuff. You don't need to spray with fungicide for this for this uh, variety. Pretty amazing. And it makes a lot of fruit and it's delicious. One of the best tasting mangoes out there. All right. Um, Zaddy asks, is the Fernandez custard apple able to be kept smaller than a San Pablo? Well, Fernandez is a dwarf custard apple tree. San Pablo is a giant. Giant. It gets, in, it gets to be a, a huge tree. So San Pablo, I mean, uh, Fernandez is going to be, is always going to be a, a tiny compared to a San Pablo. Okay. Which low sweetness mango tastes best? What's the sweetest mango? What's no which low sweet mango tastes the best? I don't know. Low sugar, means. low sugar mango? Low sugar mango, yeah. Uh low sugar mango, that's the Irwin. Now wouldn't it be the 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 green Thai ones that we tasted, the Pim Sung Moon and those? Aren't oh. they low? No. Oh. I mean they're high when they're ripe. They're really high when they're ripe in sugar. But when you eat them green, they're pretty low, right? They taste like oh. a Pimp St. Mun tastes like a like a mango apple. Yeah. It's green. Like a sour mango apple, but sweet too. So what was your answer for low sweet mango, Irwin? Yeah, Irwin. Okay. Irwin and maybe Tommy Atkins if it's really ripe. The correct way to eat Tommy Atkins is when it blushes yellow at the bottom for the first time and the fruit is still hard. You peel it like an apple. And you cut it into slices, and it's crunchy, sweet, juicy, and fibrous. But if you let it ripen, it's going to be watery, fibrous, and a little bland. Okay. Um, there's a question I don't understand, so we'll go to the next one. Somebody says, what five fruit trees would you love to get, but customers won't allow it? So I don't understand that one, so we'll go to the next well, one. Probably uh, during. No, oh, but custom. Oh, I said they said customers, but customs won't allow it. Oh, what five fruit trees would you love to get, but customs won't allow it? Durian, durian, durian. durian. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yeah, durian is amazing, and I have a video coming out soon with us tasting durian from Miami Fruit. It was amazing. Yeah. All right, the best mango for California, Zone Nine B. telling you 32 degrees fahrenheit is the limit if it gets colder if it gets around 32 degrees fahrenheit that's when you have to start taking measures to protect the tree and you know you can be you know anywhere in california from san diego to san francisco if, if it gets below 32 degrees you have to make a little greenhouse around it or bring it inside the house if it gets into the mid 30s i will start doing that Okay, uh, somebody says, I heard a lot of failure with green sapote grafting. Is this still the case? Um, not really. They, they kind of graft like mame, so it's it's fine. Okay, does the camel white sapote need a second tree to cross pollinate? Um, you know, yes and no, because. If you don't have another one, you might have some undersized fruit. Because it'll make a fruit and it'll hold the fruit if the seed, even if the seed is not viable. Because most trees abort fruits with seeds that are not viable. So I've seen a uh, white sapote fruit with... Uh, you know, make very small fruit when normally they're about this big, you know, with the, with the seed, with the regular um, pollinated seeds, they get about this big, but if they have, you know, unviable fruit, aborted seeds, they're going to be small. So that's why you need to have two, but you can still get fruit with one. Okay. Uh, can ice pack be placed at uh, mango trees to stimulate flowering? No, that's a lychee trick. It doesn't work for mangoes. Okay. 
so many questions. Let's see. What's the most Haas like avocado we can grow in Palm Beach County? Um, the Taylor. Taylor's excellent. And what about Super Haas? I'm not a fan of Super Haas. Uh huh. Taylor's good. Yes, Taylor's good. Yep. It's very much like uh, Haas avocados. Um, what's a good smaller avocado fruit of the West Indy type? Lisa. Lisa avocado. It kind of looks like the fruit that's behind you. Okay. Uh, will gem grow in, uh, well in Florida? Gem mm -hmm. avocado. Yeah. Well, gem is like a Haas. It's like another version of Haas. Just like the the Carmen, there's Carmen Haas, Lamb Haas, Gem, it's all these Haas variants. And Haas grows down here in South Florida. I have a tree that makes fruit for me every year, and they ripen evenly. I was I was expecting them to ripen to have hard spots, but they didn't. Like Winter Mexican has like you know half of it's ripe and half of it's hard. But lately, I've been getting them to ripen perfectly for some reason. I don't know what it is. But yeah, Haas, they they couldn't they work down here. This is the most interesting thing because before I moved to Florida, I used to hate Florida avocados and love Haas avocados. I still love a good Haas. However, there are some Haas's that grow in Mexico, not California, that don't taste good at all. But when you get them from the, the California ones, they taste great. However, when you get like an improved Pollock or a Ronnie or a Kampong avocado from Florida, I don't even want the Haas anymore. I'd rather have those. They taste. It blows it out of the water. Out of the water. Amazing. Yeah. But when we you know hear what? Florida Nobody avocado, we don't, we don't think about that because we, most people are getting in the store a watery avocado. Yeah. And you know what it is? It's those is craze for, um, they're trying to, they're doing this marketing campaign called avocado light means like you know low calorie you know uh light more you know less less oil i don't know what they're trying to market more like a diet craze and the west indian avocados um a lot of them tend to be watery and they're sure. shilling these avocados but uh we all know the good ones so we got them yep all right two people are online here from naples florida asking what mangoes would you advise for naples mangoes for naples you know yeah. if if you're close to the ocean just about any mango if you're um far away from the ocean if you're more inland you should stay away from you know the all import benishans the davis haydens the lancetias um you know mangoes the uh, uh valencia prize probably do they split open all these mangoes split open um, you know, mangoes that are susceptible to disease. So stay away from those. Get a Mahashanuk. Right. Maha All right. Uh, pace first to make her mame growth habit. Um, pace is a tall tree. It grows to be very, very big. It, it, grow, it, it tends to grow straight up. It wants to go straight up, you know, because in, in, in nature, these are rainforest plants and they're competing with each other to reach the top. They to get to the sunlight. You'd be the first one to be, you know, above the canopy. So um, this pace wants to be the first one on top. And Jamaica, you know, the, the only one in existence on planet Earth is that truck. And they, they prune their trees back every year with the circular saws. And uh, so those, those that Jamaica tree is uh, cut back every year or maybe twice a year. So I don't know the growth habit. And the tree is four years old, 50, almost 50 years old. And it's, you know, it's just a bushy tree because of all the pruning. All right. We got to really speed things up here. I don't know how much time you got, but uh, let's go. Uh, do you sell black sapote seedlings? No. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, Tom from uh, Sleepy Lizard Avocados, one of the Fruitful Five, just joined the party late. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hey, Tom. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have at May grafted trees for sale? Uh, you got to look on the website. I don't know if it's sold out already. Okay. Uh, can you talk about Wampy? You know, I didn't. I was never a fan of Wampy until now. That I'm, a, that I'm an old man. For some reason, I love Wampy. Now, uh, it's like white wine, and it's addictive. You just can't. Once you find a good one, you're like, "Wow, this is so good." You start looking for another one that's just like it. It's perfectly ripe, and it's so good. Just can't eat enough of those things. Right. Uh, when does queso mango arrive? The fruit? I think it's in July. Yeah. Yeah, the mid mid season. I actually, after me tasting a lot of mangoes, I love all mangoes, but I kind of like the Indian ones better than the non-Indian ones because just it's so amazing that the, the flavors and but all well, you know, amazing. there's three kinds of mangoes. There's the Indian mangoes, which is the classic flavor, right? Then there's the Indo Chinese, which is the long ones like Nam Tak Mai, Pim Sing Mun, you know. And then there's the unique flavor mangoes, which is the ones that taste like orange, the ones that taste like coconut, the ones that taste like guava, the ones that taste like peaches, the ones that taste like pineapple. Those are the unique flavors. Well, so yeah, we've been ahead. raised with these classic flavored mangoes, but now with these unique flavor, kind of getting really spoiled. I'm getting really spoiled out here with these coconut cream mangoes or, or these or, you know, orange mangoes or guava mangoes, peach mango. I really love the peach flavor. That's why I love Thai more and, and Jakarta. And it's like you open up a can of peaches and start drinking the syrup. Yeah. So. Well, Alex uh, breaks it down into way more categories. It seems like he's always coming up with a new category, but he breaks it down and... Uh... I like the the ones they have like a cream flavor, like ice cream and uh, white puri. They're 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 yeah. ice cream tastes like pina colada. Yeah, like coconut, coconut, and pineapple, like a it's, pina colada, straight up. It's it's amazing. Ice cream, ice cream mango, and they yeah. call it ice cream mango. You know, Maurice Kong introduced it from from Tobago. It's native to Trinidad and Tobago, but it's from the island of Tobago, and um. Named, he named it ice cream because it's the the resin that's left over the aftertaste is reminiscent of orange of I'm not orange of, of sherbet like mango sherbet or something. Yeah. Uh, when do you plan on getting rootstock in white sapote, young hands, or golden sapote? Yeah, golden sapote and young hands is the same thing. Um, my golden sapote tree is uh, looking pretty good. And if it keeps looking pretty good, I'm going to start getting budwood off of it and start grafting a lot of those. Um, I think I may be one of the few people on planet Earth that has a tree, besides the ones who bought it from me. But um, I need to spread it out more, give it to all the you know obvious places, um, Fruit and Spice Park, Trek, uh, USDA, all of them need to have that just in case mine dies, there's another one available. <coughs> Rufal 5 should have one of those. Yes. Yes, and uh, people don't know this and don't talk about this, but this is important for people to know. One of the reasons why I love having a good amount of mangoes and jackfruit and bananas is uh, those are three fruits you could actually freeze really well. Now, I've seen avocados frozen at Costco, but I, I don't they don't sound appealing to me. I don't know if they how well they freeze, but I discovered two years ago white sapote freezes great and it's delicious when you eat them. So yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and I got so many white sapote off my tree two years ago that there's no way I could eat them all. And you could just freeze them with the skin and eat them and the whole I, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I do that with my main mango and white sapote, freeze it with skin and all. You don't need a Ziploc bag. Yeah. That's nature's Ziploc bag. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 
Well, let me ask you. I know you got your the, the your dryer that you've been drying the the some of the fruits. Are you going to offer that this year? Your dried fruit bags. Um, you know what? I kind of got discouraged with dehydrating ever since I learned about freeze drying. Because you you lose zero nutrition on whatever you freeze dry. You know, you, you freeze dry strawberries, and you have to, you don't know, lose any nutrition value. You dehydrate strawberries you probably lose half of the nutrition so i'm saving i'm saving money so i can buy a freeze dryer <coughs> and start right. doing that well let's start a a go fund me so uh julian can get a freeze dryer and then and make available amazing free dried fruit bags <laughs> well can you imagine just you know a bag of uh guava mango freeze dried that'd be crazy or my yeah. mate, freeze dry my mate is crazy. Put it in your cereal, like a little special K with a freeze dry strawberry. Yep. All right. Somebody says I got a grafted Java plum from you. What rootstock did you use for the Java plum? Um, I used the uh, seeds from the same tree I'm collecting budwood from. I went to the fruit and spice park, and I said, "Which is the Java plum tree that everybody's going crazy about?" Oh, this one right here next to the office. All right. So I just picked up seeds from from the ground, fruit from the ground and uh planted them and uh, uh and then got later on got budwood from that tree and grafted it which wasn't really too difficult to do okay uh uh is that may really good or is it just of uh, course it's super late avocado it is excellent it blows donnie out of, it's the donnie killer why the heck would you want a donnie when you have at me this is the quality it's up there with Simmons. Go to my Facebook. You'll see the pictures. I'm, I, uh, you know, it's a shame we can't taste what we're looking at, but it was excellent. Did yeah. you try it? Did you? you yeah, tried it, right? yeah. I was. I was with you when we went to Trek and we got it, and you gave me some. You left me with the avocados. They were really good. Okay. I mean, do you think it's like up there with Simmons? Uh no, I don't. I think uh, Campong and Simmons and Ronnie and, and Or Negro and those are in, a, in an improved Pollock or in a class by itself. The app may is a thousand times better than Donnie. Thousand times better than Donnie. Uh, but, you know, I, I wouldn't rate it as high as those other ones. But for I that time pleased. of the season. I was very pleased. I was so surprised that it was good. That it was actually good. I was so, so, so pleased. That I really liked it. I really thought it was excellent. All right. We have uh, somebody saying, can you grow cacao in Florida? You know, if you go on my Facebook, just recently I posted my first cacao fruit that I grew here at my farm from my grafted trees. You know, Mars Candy gave uh, the USDA millions of dollars to do research on a disease-resistant cacao. And they came up with two varieties. And I'm lucky to have those two varieties here in my collection. And uh, one of the two, which is called the Gainesville 168-11 or something, if I remember correctly, that one made the most beautiful red colored fruit. It looked like lipstick. It was painted with lipstick. The pictures look like paintings. It's just The fruit looks like a painting, basically. So if you want to check it out. I think I may be one of the only people in the Redlands who's ever grown, successfully grown a cacao fruit. And I planted them on purpose under the mame trees because they do require the shade and protection from the cold. Because they're, they are a little bit um, cold sensitive, the ultra tropical, but it handled this winter very well since we didn't even get into the 30s for the first time in the history of this farm. We had a winter when we did not see temperatures going to the 30s, not even to the high 30s. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get into some jackfruit questions. Uh, a friend, Kareem, who has an amazing uh, group in the uh, Fort Lauderdale area, has a great club there. I think you know him. They have a wonderful sale uh, each year. He has, he says, what's your take on orange crush versus banana crush jackfruit? Is one small... Well yeah, uh, in, in statute size, and is uh the flavor as as it sounds? 
A banana crunch flavor is as it sounds. It's like being a crunchy banana. The banana crunch. That is the that tree I got from Richard Campbell. I got a seedling tree from Richard Campbell that were hybrids, controlled hybrids that he did back when he worked at Fairchild. And he had this hybrid uh, program where he wanted to come up with new varieties. And from there came uh, the Fairchild Sweet and uh, another one, I forgot the name. But uh, this was one of the hybrids. I forgot which one of the two. I think it was a China and something else. And the thing with the banana crunch, you can peel the skin like if it was a champata or like a china jatu. It's very easy to peel. It just it just just peels right off like it's almost like a tangerine. And you just take the bulbs out, you eat it, and it's no, it's there's very little latex, no aftertaste, and, and very crunchy and tastes like a banana, like a crunchy banana. And uh, um, the what was the other one? The orange crush. Orange crush. Orange Crush, uh, well, Banana Crunch is a bigger mango. I mean, a, a bigger jackfruit. It can grow to be a very, very big fruit. Um, orange Crush, I don't, I don't, I've never seen a big Orange Crush fruit. And now Orange Crush, you know where that's from? The orange Crush jackfruit. Where's that from? That one is from Pine Island Nursery. That's one that was named by by Eric. The owner of Pine Island, he named that one. Interesting, interesting. And I know I uh, a lot of people are looking for a small jackfruit. The Cochan was one you mentioned last time, right? Yeah, that's a small fruit. And they can get medium size. They can get medium size. But that's another one that's super easy peel. I mean, I made a video on my Facebook about that one, too. It was kind of I was opening it with my daughter. And uh, it's super easy peel. And they just... You just shake it, and they all just come out. They all fall off to a bowl. Have you had a Boca Champa duck? Boca Champa duck? Yeah. I've never had a Champa duck before. Yeah, it's really not a true Champa duck. It's a, it's a hybrid like the China. But okay. uh, Richard Wilson there over there at Excalibur had it, and uh, I ended up getting some of them. And it's really weird because one year it was easy peel, soft, delicious, the next year, the fruit got really big, and they weren't good at all. And I think uh, a seedling might have popped through, so we'll have to see. But uh, I took seedlings of the original ones, so hopefully they'll get some good fruit they're starting to produce now. So uh, trying to run through these questions. How much more time you got? Um, I don't know, another 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, somebody's saying our Duncan dot Bombay variety mangoes worth planting on the West Coast inland. Yes, absolutely, hundred percent. Okay, and do you guys know uh, Sweet Tot as being a vigorous grower? I have uh, several um, gallon zills purchased from Laura and Tropical Acres. And both sweet tots are growing like rockets. Yeah, if they're happy in the right climate, they'll grow like a rocket. They can be they can be just as vigorous as anything else. Yeah, sweet tarts are known as uh branch breakers. <laughs> I know somebody with a really big tree and literally the branches break. I have a smaller tree and I gotta cut the bottom branch because they just all hang on the floor. It's one tree that the, the fruit is great. It's it's a little difficult for some people to pick, like myself. You got to learn when to pick them. But uh, that's a tree you might want to thin it out. You'll get bigger mangoes if you thin them out uh, because yeah. they grow in a lot of small bunches. Okay, let's take uh, let's do three 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 or four more questions. We'll go to the Facebook. I mean, to the YouTube comments that people aren't live, and they had some questions. Uh, because uh, there's just so many questions. Maybe we'll have to do a part two, and I apologize if we didn't get to your question, uh, but we're doing our best. Okay. Let's see. We have... What's your top five avocados? Um, uh, Simmons, Improved Pollock, um... Oro Negro. Um, uh, uh, um, Lara Purple.
purple, which I call the uh, purple Simmons. Um, I like the Monroe. I like the Ronnie. That's six. Okay. All right. Three more questions came up here. Uh, well, there's a lot more. There's over 100 more questions, but we can't get to them all. Uh, so my question is about Chena jackfruit. I've read that it is uh, the most flood resistant than other jackfruits. I'm planning on planting mine close to a canal. Any else, anything else you could say about this tree? Well, the older it is, the more flood resistant it is. Okay. The younger it is, the more susceptible it's going to be to like, you know, a day or two days or three days in the water. Okay. I actually yesterday put a video out on Chena jackfruit. It's uh my the, I don't have any uh out of uh, I mean uh San Pablo fruiting yet, but until I do, I mean I have a lot of different fruits, but the Chena jackfruit to me is the best tasting fruit I have. Look at that, that mame apple. Look at that. This is the stuff around the seed. Show everybody right there since you have an example of a freestone because. Uh, the a lot of the mame apples you buy, it's it sticks to the stone. But this one, uh, this variety you have, it doesn't stick to the stone. Look at that, great example. Like, it reminds me of a, it reminds me of a coconut, like the inside the the coconut flesh. See yeah, that, that texture. Yeah. All right. Another question. Uh, we need pumpkin pie mame. What are pumpkin pie ma when are pumpkin pie mame cyan's going to be available? Or is there any other dwarf size mame? Cyan's from pumpkin pie. Yeah. Not for a, probably not for me, probably ever. I have a tree in the ground that's finally getting established me about almost more probably more than a year to establish this tree thing didn't want to grow just stagnant i probably didn't water that tree at some point for like three months not a drop of water just from the rain and uh finally it looks like it's it's going to establish itself it's it's flushing out a whole bunch of new leaves and and flowers and stuff I have my only tree. I have another tree that I had to put back in a pot because that thing wanted to die on me. So I put it back in a pot and it came back to life. So I gotta find a good spot for that one so I can have two. But I'm 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 behind in the game, the pumpkin pie game. Well, I want to one caution everybody with pumpkin pie. It is a new amount new amount May, and I had two of them both thriving in the ground. But one of them just died on me for no apparent reason. And I heard two other people tell me the same thing. Probably so, too much water. They possibly, don't like too much water. Possibly, but my other one just got the same amount. And, you know, I mean, I it's it's a new... Anytime there's a new thing out there, you got to just wait and see what how it's going to be. Yeah, it right. could be... It can be over here, it could be nice and dry, a good drainage, and over here the drainage could be bad. You just don't know. That's why you gotta use a moisture meter. Yep. All right. Uh, when are you gonna start shipping Jamaica Mame Sapote for those who pre ordered one? Yeah. The people, the first people that ordered back in January, their orders are gonna be fulfilled probably next week. You got about 20 trees that are ready to go. Okay, and and then the rest sometime this year, hopefully right, me... sooner than later. Okay, let me find the last question of the night so we can let you go and eat, and uh, we'll be back again and do this again if everybody wants it. Uh, somebody says, "How do I make my mame americana grow? It's slower than a snail." I put special fertilizer on it, uh, but nothing's helping it. So the only special fertilizer you need for that 
It is all-purpose miracle grow. Two tablespoons and a gallon of water. Mix it up and pour it on the roots once a month. Other than that, buy a moisture meter and don't water it until it's on a three. From a scale to one to ten, a three. When the moisture level, when the moisture level is at a three, that's when you water it again. If it's anything higher than a three, don't water it. This is for a tree that doesn't want to grow. If you want it to grow, you got to stop watering it and test the moisture on your soil. See if it needs water to, to, to determine if it needs water or not. You can't water on a schedule. Okay. I, I've, got, I've got another question for you. And then I want to ask, Will you, Julian, go on under the YouTube video and maybe answer some questions that people have? Because there's so many we didn't get to, and you could just type your answer real quick there, or, or do you not even have time to do that? Um, On my website, there's a live chat. Okay. There's a live chat. There's a live chat where I, where I can answer your questions, but you have to go on my website. LauraFarmsMiami.com. Yeah, LaraFarmsMiami.com. You go there, there's a live chat. I'm getting a whole bunch of chats right now, but I can't answer it because I'm with you. <laughs> uh, among all the Zill Project Variety Mangoes that you sell, what are the top three sellers? That's going to be the last question tonight, everybody. Um, Top three? Top three sellers of the all the new Zill varieties. Uh, uh, juicy peach. Uh, uh, orange sherbet, and uh, um, uh, pineapple pleasure. There you go. Okay. All right, everybody, there you go. That's another uh, live chat. And we're going to have more with the Fruitful Five. We'll get them in here soon. And we'll make another video soon. And uh, remember to continue to put your comments or questions below. I'll try to answer some if I can or I'll get an answer for you from Julian. And Julian, thank you so much for your time and everything that you do. And uh, it's great to, to know you and to get down to your farm. I can't wait. I'm going to be there soon. All right. We'll be here waiting yeah. for you. All righty. And uh, those San Paulo's are ripening up right there. I'm, I'm looking forward to coming there and making a video with those. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll put some aside for you. I'll put them in the refrigerator or something in case they ripen. So, sounds great. Sounds great. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please do so. We got so many videos like this. And you can see all Q&As I did with Julian in the past and also Alex and other people as well fruit experts that have answers that you might be asking. So check those live videos that I've done out in the past. And we got a lot of videos coming up here. So please subscribe and share this channel with others. Julian Laura, thank you. His link is below, uh, laurafarmsmiami.com. And you all have a great night, everybody, and keep growing. Thank you, Julian. You're welcome. Bye. Good night, everybody.